present, the Tibetan Autonomous Region TAR is shut off to foreigners as China uh, Chinese government prepares for events to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Tibet's so-called liberation. Thank you, Jimmy. <clears throat> 60 years after China invaded Tibet, the Chinese government has turned Tibet into a human rights black hole, a region with no freedom of speech, religion or assembly. Hundreds of Kurti monks are believed to remain in detention and hundreds more who have been threatened with expulsion. The monastery remains under siege and a climate of fear pervades the area. Human rights conditions in Tibet for the last 60 years has only worsened. The language, the language policies which the Chinese government implemented beginning last year has, has meant that Tibetan students, as young as 12, have taken to the streets to oppose its implementation. The environmental policies in the age of climate change is proving disastrous, not just for Tibet's ecosystem, but for the world environment as well. Sure, um, this is for everyone actually. Um, I, I recently, I'm, I'm now working on a story on the, there's been a kind of a, a you know, the uh, kind of a growing rift between the Vatican and Beijing and some of the Catholic experts in the Catholic Church I spoke to said that they, it signals a real departure. Beijing has decided you know, basically to put its foot down and and uh, they're not going to, they're not interested in any kind of negotiation anymore. And I'm wondering, and he's, the, I've been told that this, it's, um, you know, kind of connected to the crackdown on, on, on rights lawyers and dissidents that we've seen since February. So do you get a sense that the same is happening, that this is across the board, but it's also happening with Tibet, that we've reached a kind of a, uh, a kind of a, a new turning point? that there will be a little more realism that um, for China to hold its place in the world, um, it, it, has to, it has to behave in a more grown-up fashion and it has to genuinely engage with the international community's concerns about the situation. Um, and this is Tendor here uh, from Students for Free Tibet. I would quickly like to add that um, I think <clears throat> this kind of uh, behavior and, um, you know, dogmatic kind of, you know, uh, very stubborn kind of attitude from the Chinese government in terms of their approach toward any authority, no matter what, whether religious authority, um, whether it's the Vatican. I think in Tibet, actually, uh, Chinese policy toward religious authority has been, um, been operating at this very level of strictness and violence and um, intransigence for a really long time and it's very obvious that the Chinese government by by making these decisions uh, they're showing to the world that they are feeling very insecure about their own control and power and influence over their own people. So the next question is what support can you realistically expect from the international community given that all nations Price their economic relationships with China above any unfortunate human rights issue. We didn't expect an overnight uh, miracle to happen, you know. We don't really see that international support alone can actually solve this long standing problem. I think if at all there has to be a change, it has to come from China, it has to come from the people, from the pillars of the power. But all we are seeing is uh, we live in the 21st century and uh, we're all netizens, you know, rather than uh, in addition to being citizens, uh, we get information. So I think the international support, I think it has to bring it, it has to bring it to the grassroots. There's a, there's a team of people here in, uh, in Dharamsala listening very carefully to the uh, press conference today and many congratulations to uh, the Tibet Action Institute for uh, putting the technological infrastructure together for this, which probably is, as they say, the first uh, press conference on Google Plus. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining this call. Uh, before we conclude, we're going to play this YouTube video of a Tibetan rap song um, <clears throat> from Switzerland by a Tibetan, exiled Tibetan. And uh, this lighthearted, um, playful Tibetan rap song has been banned in China. So we're going to conclude with that video. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah.